Hi, my name is Sheila Landry um, from Sheila Landry Designs and today I'm going to show you how to do the beautiful marbled background like I did on this little table runner project that I'm doing for Toll Town and it has some Lily of the Valleys in it and I've used this process on several projects lately um, I did it on my haunted carousel I did the floor with the two using blacks and golds and then I put bones around that and it was pretty cool looking and it's really it looks hard to do but it's a very easy process and I want to show you just how easy it is now the table runner the little mat that can go under a candle or whatever is made on of Rocklon fabric which is drapery fabric drapery lining. This is a blackout rock line. It's usually rubbery on one side and it looks kind of like linen on the other. And you can paint on both sides. I've used it for banners where I've folded it over and I've both sides look the same pretty much if you prep it right and paint it right though there isn't really a lot of prep involved. And um, it's really nice to work with because you can cut it to any shape and you don't have to hem it or do anything with it. It's weatherproof pretty much if you finish it properly. So it's a really nice fabric. I like to use it for a lot of things. It's great to paint on too. So I'm going to put that aside. And what we're going to do here is this pretty pink marbling effect. And it has a very slight shimmer in it, which makes it look deep and nice. And to, to get this effect, I'm going to use DecoArt's Media Fluid Acrylics, which are their new line of paints. And people wonder maybe why they have another line of paint, and the Media Fluid Acrylics are really cool. They're, um, they're not toll paints. They're not what we would use like for this part of the design. The reason I chose them for this marbling effect is because they're transparent. They're, they're highly pigmented, yet they're see-through. So they're never going to be like good for base coating or things like that. But I used them for this marbling effect, and they came out really nice because the transparency gave it some more depth. Now I used the Quinectodone Magenta, and I used Translucent White. And I also used the Shimmer Mister, which is a little spritz in white. And it'll give just a little hint of shimmer when we're done. And DecoArt's Glazing Medium. It helps to keep everything moving so that we can, you know, blend and get everything looking nice. So I'm going to put this one aside. Now, I already base coated my rock one. And I preferred not to cut it to shape until after I was done with the with the um, glazing of it or, or the marbling effect. And I used Natural Buff, which has a nice little, like a pinkish flesh tint to it. And I used a roller. And I rolled the coat on. I like using a roller on Rockland. It makes it so easy and fast. I let it dry, and I used some super fine sanding and sanded it down just really lightly and then I brushed it off made sure there was no debris on it and I did one more coat and it gave it a nice smooth finish and what that does the first the first coat will raise up the fibers a little bit and when it dries then the acrylic will kind of seal the fibers and then you sand them down and then your second coat will just sit on top real nice and it'll give you a, a real good base to start with so that's the way you do that now to to do this um, I'm going to use a two inch flat brush a nice soft brush and I'm going to dampen it first grab my paper towels here and I'm going to start with the glazing medium and I'm going to put it after I get the cat here I put it right on wipe out all the excess moisture I want this good and damp 
I don't want it too wet, but I want it to keep moving for a little bit till we're done. And this will help things keep moving. Now see how smooth it is because I, I did the extra coat and sanded. And then I'm just going to wipe a little bit of that out of my brush. It's okay to leave some in. I have a tray. I used a black one. And I'm going to use a sea sponge. And this has been wet and I squeezed it out so it was almost completely dry. You don't want too much water in it because it's going to wind up... Um, It'll drip on and make make a mess. So I'll start with the white, and I'm going to put a good sized puddle of white. Actually, I'm going to put two, and I'll show you why. And in order to get the the pretty soft pink, I'm going to go a drop at a time, and just a little tiny bit in and I forgot my other brush to mix see one drop of that um, magenta is pretty strong so you don't want to put too much in let me see I'm gonna go one more one more drop because we want a little color we want a difference on it so I'm just going to brush mix this in. It doesn't have to be perfect. Like I said, this is really easy. You could do this with any colors you want. Just use your imagination. Okay, and I'm going to take my sponge. Make sure it's a little damp. Mine got too dry. And then start picking up paint. And just randomly. Don't make a pattern and don't do it all in the same spot. Kind of just go random if that's possible. And then you'll take your brush and you're going to go in one direction and very lightly start swiping it. Just tickle the surface. You don't want it too salad in. See how it's a nice soft effect. Take the same sponge and start adding white in places. Again, try not to go into, um, try not to make a pattern. I tend to do organized random. It's very hard for me to do random. And now we're going to, once again, very, very carefully, or lightly. We don't want to be smearing it too much, but we want to kind of just blend it in so the bottom looks good. And see why I don't cut the edges? Because they would probably be rolling up and make it harder for you. I'm going to get a little messy with this, I find. I do anyway. And I want to smooth that out in the middle. And that already looks pretty nice, but I want a little bit more color in there. So I'm going to take just a little more darker and mix it in, make a little bit of a darker. This is what I like about mixing, is you know everything's going to look good together because you're using one color of pink. You don't have to guess, will this pink be too gray or this pink be, you know, too red. Just little bits at a time. And see, that makes some really pretty little effects. And now, you could always go back and put more later. That's the fun part. And if you put too much, that's the other easy part about this, is just let it dry and, and maybe tone it down with some white if you think you have too much pink in there. You know, maybe you don't want that much pink. There, I think that's good. Now, the next step is even more fun. I'm going to put a little more paint on the palette. 
And then I'm going to take a script liner brush, a long liner brush. Don't get too wet on it. But I'm going to load it really fully. Get a little water maybe in there. And then it's, you have to be brave, but you just start to drag it across. And you want to go in the general same direction. You could cross over a little, but you don't want it. Don't make stripes though, or things like that. You want to add some color. These are going to be the green lines from the marble. You know, every once in a while one may go weird. Fill in your marbling. And once again, take the brush and very lightly. Isn't that looking cool? It looks awesome. Whoops. Get the way. You could take this down too. I just didn't because I was switching back and forth. If you get a cat hair in there like I do, I would wait for wait for it to dry and pick it out. Or else you're gonna make a mess. Now, as a final touch, well not final, but second to final. We're almost done already. I told you it's fast. You're gonna go in the white. And same thing, but not as many, unless you want, I guess it's yours. Just drag the brush, let it roll, drag it. Richard decided to eat his dinner, so if you hear crunching, that's him up eating his dinner right behind me. They always like to get involved somehow, my helpers here. Okay, there, that's probably enough. Maybe one more, little one. And same thing, you probably figured that out already. And remember light touch. I can't say enough how light. Because you want it to look like marble. And now see the you get such a nice, deep look with this. And you want to pick at it, and you want it to be harder than it is because it looks so cool. But the best thing to do is once you get it nice, leave it. And you're going to leave it dry. And then as a final, final touch, because I always like things to be a little sparkly, I wanted to try the media shimmer mister and this is a white one so it'll spritz little bits of white out and if you go halfway you can spritz and then I gave it a final little white to blend them a little leave a little couple little dots in there Oops. You don't want it obvious, you want it very subtle. And it'll give a very subtle shine to it. There we go. Isn't that gorgeous? And wasn't it easy? All you guys see you can't, but it's so easy to do. You can one step at a time. See? So, I hope you follow the, excuse me, I just hit the camera, um, follow along the rest of the pattern, and the rest is pretty straightforward painting, and have fun. I hope you try this on other colors and other things, too. Usually take a base color. I think for, the, for this one I used black, of course, and then I used a metallic gold and a metallic pearl, and it made it look just lovely. Just those two colors. And of course, I didn't need the mister because it was already shiny. So, have fun.
Thank you.